Hi guys. Hey Laura, Christine, Jill. Wait, who who is AA test? I don't know who AA test is. Yeah, we got to figure that out because somebody's underneath Aaron's account. Because AA test is something that Aaron and I have used before for different things. Huh. I have no idea who that is. Brandy, hi. You know, we could do, we could just block them. And then if they don't uh, complain, then I guess they don't get in, right? Yeah, I don't know who the heck. Hola. Hey. <laughs> Dude, somebody's under AA test again. Oh, good Lord. Who is that? I don't know who it is. Quit using my shit, man. Uh, hey, hey, test. Who are you? Stacey. Oh, it's David. <laughs> David. <laughs> What's your name and purpose? <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. I, I, what's funny is I use double A test for a lot of stuff, so I don't know. Somewhere something got crossed up, so who knows? David, who? David Buffalo. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dude, it's been raining like crazy out here. Yeah, it's um, it's got to be around single digits here. It's bad. <laughs> yeah, is it cold? Oh, I guess so. If it's single digits. Yeah, and we're getting ready to <coughs> get hit with a big uh, snowstorm. Awesome. So that'll be well, fun. Luckily, you don't have to uh, slog in and uh, go to a job. Heck no. I was in. I'll never forget that either. Like I had to commute one hour, one way. So two hours every day to teach. And at one point yeah. I had a, like, um, just a regular, is it an S 10 truck? And like, there wasn't a lot of weight in the back. So that thing was just like Ooh. terrible in the snow. Oh, yeah. It didn't yeah. matter if it had four wheel drive. I was like spinning <laughs> out and hitting guardrails. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Uh, so um that's funny i'm gonna go ahead and um oh we don't even need to record do we because we are out on facebook so we can just get started oh <coughs> are you sure or did, uh i'll double you, i'll hit record just in case yeah i might as well redundancy yeah. yeah i've got a cough so i'll be muting a lot today all right <laughs> all right guys um Thank you for joining us for our second weekly call for brandability. As you know, you know the gang. We're all here. Well, wait, where's Christina? Christina, are you here too? Yes, yeah, she's here. Okay. She's here. Um, so we need to talk about week two, which we are currently validating our niches, right? So we're making sure that we are picking something where we have a big enough audience and where there is enough search volume to really um, validate that we should be spending time on this and building a brand around it. So um, I don't know, do we have any questions already or maybe emails that um, had questions that we could address yeah, with everyone? And then guys, of course, um, I'll check in the Facebook group too, but um, of course in the chat, fire away. This is your time. You have time with us right now to ask us any questions you're wondering. And don't think they're silly or ridiculous because I'll guarantee other people think the same thing or have the same questions. Um, so, you know, let us know. Um, oh, we have two AA tests. I wonder, why did that, why does that happen? That's weird. Huh. So we've, oh wait, do we? Yeah. Why is that, everybody's an AA test? I see like, is that two or three people? Yeah, a couple different people. That's weird. Maybe that's like the uh, name they give if we don't put our name in or something during registration. I don't know. Possibly. Um, but anyway, hey, Ooh, you, go ahead. I'm sorry, let, let me know when you're ready for some questions and I'll start dropping them in. Fire away. Uh, we've got one real quick here. Um, Jill just said she's <coughs> using, um, her niche from camo to athleisure. Um, should I do athleisure camo or do you guys think I should just do athleisure? Um, and do you guys, do the guys know or Christina, are you guys 
good with what athleisure even means. Um, yeah, I, 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 I do tons of yoga and all kinds of stuff, man. But, you know, I, the, I, I got the term from following Kate Hudson, growing her like athletic brand. And I don't know if they were the ones who really started like using the term a lot, but that's kind of where I picked up on athleisure. And that's kind of like my lifestyle, you know? So it's like comfortable pieces because you're into fitness that like take you, you know, into your daytime from the gym to your regular work a day, sort of a thing. Um, I don't know what, I mean, maybe go a little wider than just camo then, you know? I, I don't, camo to me is a style. It's mm -hmm. it's like, it's a print pattern. It's not necessarily a niche. Yeah. I would say the niche is more of the country girl, like the, the demographic, the avatar that we kind of started to create, which was, the girl who likes to hunt, who likes to fish, who likes to, it's that country girl attitude. That to me is more of what that niche is. And you can absolutely take that niche and make it specific to, what do you call it? Athleisure, athleisure, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, that that's kind of where I would go with it. I wouldn't just basically say, I'm only going to do camo. I think that's something that's hard to do. I know some people were talking about real or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was real tree? They they just they created their own camouflage or something. Are you guys yeah. gonna follow redneck on the panel speak? <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. Hey, Why yeah, are we talking redneck about here? Come on. We have uh, a fellow resident redneck. Tell us what you think, Duffy. <laughs> no, I was waiting for my chance here. Real tree is like a, a certain pattern of of uh camo that they developed that's you know more advanced than the traditional 70s and 80s style of camo. So it blends in with uh you know different backgrounds and stuff in terms of like more of like a leafy pattern and things of that nature. But what I was going to say is, is to follow up with what you were saying, Aaron, which is it is that kind of country girl niche, but I would, I think that niche would probably eat that up with what she's talking about. And if you have some camo stuff, but you also like, I sell a lot of, not a lot, but I, I do sell some pop sockets and t-shirts that are country girl, mutter girl related. And a lot of those things, like I could see some, some yoga leggings or the athleisure type of style of stuff with, you know, some, uh, you know, not you know, like hunting rifles on them, you know, and some camo with orange. Cause I've got some camo States. Uh, I put the camo inside of the state and then I took a, like a real tree deer and it's, you know, it's like a buck with, it doesn't have the, it's just a skull of a buck and it's orange. It's like Hunter orange, like what's on your hat, Aaron. And I put that inside of the state. So you can, um, you can take all of the elements from, the different like a shotgun for you know like duck hunting or rabbit hunting or pheasant hunting or you could do you know go down the the lines of creating some type of patterned thing on you know the leggings that would be like some type of rifle like you know i don't know all the rifles names but uh do those types of things In, incorporate the hunter orange along the you know along the the side of the pants and then maybe do some camo stuff but maybe put come up with some type of brand that's got that implies hunting rather than just a camo and make that your insignia, like, you know, up here on your hip or something, you know, like in this area. She, she make, said her avatar Bree said use pink. Oh, even pink. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And you know what else I'm thinking right along those same lines? I just thought of a couple other patterns. One of my best selling pop sockets is the diamond plating on like mudding trucks and like yeah. four wheelers and, and trucks and stuff. I would totally rock a pair of leggings that were diamond plated that had like the metal, um, you know, patterning pattern on them, even like stuff that's like abstract, like that kind of looks like tire treads or, mm -hmm. you know, um, definitely skulls, definitely skulls. Um, trying to think what else variations of camo would be really cool um even so different colored camos different patterns of camo the different colors you know in my yeah. head i'm seeing like a sports bra uh sublimation Ooh. real women hunt and fish or something oh, like that cool. like do the sports bras with them yeah or real yeah. women wear camo or you know what i'm saying like yeah but but it's not it's not just camo you can use camo in everything you do if you want but think of what is what does wearing camouflage say about you? What is the statement that is being made when you wear camouflage? And it's that, you know, I would assume, 
I'm not heavy into that niche that we've covered. I don't own anything camo, I don't think. But it's more of, um, you know, it's the attitude that's around it. It's the attitude of country. When I think of country, I know a ton of hillbillies and rednecks, and they're the most loyal people in the world. They're very, very cool. Um, even Duncan has all his teeth still, which is amazing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but they're very loyal. They're very proud to be country. And, and when you wear something that has, like, even if it's just a buck with camouflage in it, you're making a statement. And you want to make sure that you're that you're making with whatever you're going to do with the athleisure stuff is consistent. You can still have leggings that have camo on them and be like you're you're still making a statement by having the camo on there. And that's what's mo the most important is what's the attitude behind it, what's the message behind it, so that anybody who sees that and sees the camo, if you include it on that design, is like, yeah, I that's awesome. You know, they have so, to look at that and go, I, I resonate with that. There is one alternative to take to going with the country, rural, mudding, hunting crowd. And that would be to um, definitely do more than camel, but focus, I guess, on the crowd that I would call the urban outfitters, bohemian anthropology crowd that loves um, like the feather print stuff and camo, uh, you know, who comes to mind is my mom and my sister-in-law. They're crazy about free people. Like they'll have a camouflage, you know, jacket on that has like patches on it. And they're always looking for kind of bohemian type prints and camouflage also falls kind of into that as well. Like a retro seventies, you know? Yeah. Um, so you could approach it in either way. I would go with whatever one resonates with you. I love the mudding stuff. Um, and I love the way that, you know, Aaron just framed that, um, you know, talking about who, who that audience is, um, okay. you know, but whatever works for you, Jill. I think too, uh, just if, I, if you don't mind me adding that, um, like I sell a lot of uh, pig hunting shirts online and <laughs> not what you used to do in college, Aaron. <laughs> used to do <laughs> uh, you know javelina hogs that's a that's a big thing down in texas and, and you know there, there's a real hog hog you know invasion problem going on and yeah i didn't realize that they have shows oh, yes. whole shows about it <laughs> yeah and so um i actually had somebody message me on one of my stores and said hey do you have these for women and i was like you know what i don't have any that are catered towards women so i started creating some of those with some pink like sniper hair things across the hog they started selling, you know, so there's a lot of different things you could do. I mean, it's, um, Jill could, you know, look at Ducks Unlimited. They could look at. Uh, so you, know, you could even do, you could even target them by the game, which is yeah. kind of loosely related to the region, probably that they are in the U.S. So it could be like the duck hunting girls and the hog hunting girls. And, the, you know, you could even do it that way. Yeah, it's totally <laughs> underserved because think about it. I mean, it's it's a it's known as a, a masculine type of thing to do, but so many women enjoy hunting and fishing and all that stuff. I don't think they're being catered to enough. So I was just going to say, take any male dominated niche and make it female. And that is, you could make a brand out of that, whether it's bass fishing or hunting or now four you, or whatever. You just gave me a really good idea. If we, if, if Jill, if you still love this niche, I'm thinking of my Facebook feed right now, and it's it's been full of pregnant women in camo that have been out during hunting season still. So yeah. there's a whole group of women that are so into this. This is their lifestyle yeah. that they would be all over cute stuff that has to do with being pregnant and hunting and camo and, and that whole lifestyle. Yeah, I think when there's I've that stuff in there. My merch account, when I first started, they banned it now, but you used to be able to use the term maternity. I sold mm -hmm. hundreds, if not thousands of maternity shirts, uh, baby announcements and stuff like that. So um, that's also a good niche if you guys are looking into that. The the one thing that I really like about the baby niche or, or the pregnancy niche is that you are bringing in a customer at a specific point in their life and you can grow that customer you can that you can make them a lifelong customer because you know where they are in the buying process. If they're buying uh, twelve month old stuff or or toddler stuff, well, you 
you if you do your things correctly, you can just keep selling them stuff. You can follow their child and and give them stuff for their kid their whole life. Like it's it's a really cool starting point for a brand. That and the power of you know every in particular with females, every single female when they find when we find a good place to buy gifts and stuff for maternity or for uh baby showers and everything we're gonna come back for every single shower that we have to go to because i don't want to spend hours and hours and hours looking for yep items because quite frankly i think you guys have probably seen this too you finally find it and it's like some dead website that's not even active and you put something in your car and you're like really i just searched for two hours for that so there's a lot of that out there too I you don't agree. have to compete. They're not a competitor if you can't buy their stuff. <laughs> so, um, so we had another question. Are we looking to build our business only using pod products or eventually sell other merch? Uh, you can absolutely do um, other merch as well. Um, we just are using pod because it's easy and low risk and we've had success with it. And um, it, there's certainly no one size fits all. And we can show you how to do affiliate offers. If you want to have physical products where you actually are selling, you know, like I have a client that wants to sell a, um, almost like a subs kind of like a subscription box. Um, and so that will have to be physically fulfilled. Um, so anything like that that you want to do, absolutely. That's part of it. I think the most important thing is to get it up and going and use pod first just because it's so easy let and then start to build your complementary products into it yeah and you can also um once you start to build up some type of loyal customer base you can ask them what they want and what they're looking for uh, there's all kinds of <clears throat> like secondary and tertiary products that you can go out and private label there's private label places all over the u.s and let's say for example that you know you're in the yoga niche or something right and you're customers decided that they want some type of beeswax thing you know and i'm just making up stuff off the cuff here but you could go well shoot you know 300 people have asked me for that let me go out and see if i can private label my own thing and attach my brand to it, and then start selling this beeswax type of or this tiger bomb rub to my audience and you can put your own label on it so there's you yes print on demand is the easiest or one of the easiest way to do it because you don't have to carry any inventory but there's always ways to branch out to it later by doing private label stuff Absolutely. I would ne I'll never say never, but I hate inventory. Everybody <laughs> probably knows by now. I just, I, I hate inventory. It, I, and then with me, I know all of the hacks around it. And I know right. like, and it's scary because, you know, you feel like you don't, you don't know what the connection would be. Like, how do you actually do that? How do you actually do physical products without physically touching them? But there are ways you know, if somebody's really, really like, I really want to do this, I can walk you through the process. I mean, there's even a process where I, Amazon will be the fulfillment, where we can list your products on Amazon, and then the Shopify buyer is buying on your store, and Amazon is shipping to your customer. Um, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother course, though. I mean, it really is. That, that, yeah, there is no absolutely. That. But so. if we have anybody in here, like I know, um, there's a couple of people that have Amazon FBA experience. It's as simple as an integration. And if they're already selling something that's complementary to their niche, it's just going to mimic what they already have um, up uh, for sale. So it's doable for sure. Um, we have another question. How do you know that you can make metal pieces? I would hate to sell a bunch of things that I might not be able to sell on my own. Curious is how you decide to go to production. I don't understand the metal pieces. I'm not sure either. I would hate to tell you. Um, skulls. Whoever that is, can you rephrase that question? I'm not quite sure exactly what you mean by how do you know that you can make those metal pieces? Um, I know one thing too is, you know, there's nothing wrong with building this brand and having it all be pod and then selling it and being done with it. And then there's another alternative where you maybe you're building this as more of a long-term thing. And so, um, you know, there comes in that piece of then you can go to the, the pod and say, Hey, you know, this is a really good selling t-shirt or necklace or whatever. Can we get this at wholesale pricing and then set up a fulfillment center that will ship it out 
So instead of making two, three, five, ten dollars, you're making fifteen, twenty, twenty-five dollars on those same products. Right. Um, and but I mean, look, we're still in the validation phase, and nobody yeah. has any of those issues yet. You know, it, those are all very good problems to have. But I, I let's I want to try to focus on the week, just because we're trying to make sure that people are getting the validation that they need. Sure. Yep. You know. What I'm here's a, so let's. Here's the next question. I could use some ideas on how to niche down in the vegan vegetarian niche. You guys suggested several ways, but the only one I could find myself identifying with would be vegan entrepreneur. How do you target that? Wouldn't that be too narrow? I would go with like business owner. That's a, like, there are just brick and mortar business owners. I mean, if you want to go wider in the entrepreneur niche, I would just. Well, no, but I think business. they're, they want vegan. I don't do you, I think vegan is the niche really vegan and vegetarian. I've sold vegan shirts. Yeah. What, do, what she's talking about is our response that we had sent was a suggestion of oh, okay. going even deeper into the vegan niche somehow, like a corner of it, like whether it be um, gluten-free and vegan or, you know, vegan, making veganism work for business owners or something is where I was thinking since veganism and, and vegetarianism is popular, it's also like, there's a lot out there. Yeah. I think it, it is, is this maybe what they're asking too? Cause it sounds like to me, and I didn't see that one come in, but maybe they're thinking whenever we say niche down further, like the, the vegan thing is, is a really small subculture compared you know, compared to people that like cars, you know? So Whenever we say niche down, you might have vegan business women, vegan entrepreneurs, vegan uh, people that like yoga, vegan people that you know live in New York or whatever. You could have a bunch of sub niches from the vegan thing and be able to target those in different ways online with on Facebook and Google Shopping, and then see which one is you're getting the most traction with and run all of these types of ads. But you, when you start to qualify or validate your niche, you want to. Yes, you can think vegan, but like what Bree's saying, look at vegan, you know, if there's anything that you can get some data on with vegan entrepreneurs or vegan business people or vegan. Be, like, yeah, yeah, a big one would be like runners, like vegan running, runners yeah, exactly. or weightlifters or um, I'm trying to think of something else. Uh, that yeah. would help you niche on. Or it could just be vegans by state. You, th There might be a state. There you go. Yeah, probably California has a lot of vegans in it, you know, and probably mm -hmm. New York and probably Florida as well. So mm -hmm. you know, you can niche down by state. So I don't know if that I, helps. I think vegan is a good niche, really. They're very passionate. But, yeah. I, you know, I think you need to figure out what is the messaging that vegans believe in, which I know a lot of it is anti-animal or, you know, anti-killing uh, animals and all that stuff. So. I just think you can use vegan really as the niche because it's very, it's a lot easier to find out where uh, brands that vegans like. I know that they have the, um, Ooh, how there's about, like a, there, there's like a, just made me with, think of one, Aaron, like, vegan like, pet owners. That's yeah, huge. You can do that. You know, yeah. I just think vegans, I think vegans a good niche in general. I think you can yeah. take, take any product. I like, I'm any product. And how do you make that speak to a vegan? So take a cutting board and you could even say meat never touches this board and have it carved into a cutting board. You know what I mean? And then they can cut their vegetables on it. Or um, I'm trying to think of another, you know, this this glass, it could be a wine glass etching that says, you know, this is this wine glass is 100% gluten free or, you know, kill free glass or something. Like, whatever the messaging is, I think vegan niche is passionate enough to target in general and there's definitely places where they hang out online there's definitely websites that they all use and i love i always love your way aaron of niching down too is like being like the vegan cutting board whatever guru yeah. uh you know or or hub um you can you can niche down by like specializing in products that we already know like almost no one else is offering because everybody's t-shirt, yeah. t-shirt, 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 t-shirt only. Get out of the t-shirt. What 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 kills me is there's so much opportunity. A phrase that works in t-shirts will work on other products. Like the, the the hard part is finding the winning phrases. So if you want to go out and find and see a winning phrase that you see 
all the time on t-shirts and throw it on a wine glass, you could like, that could be a niche. Yeah. Like that, yeah. it really could, you could put that as part of your store. You know, we're the wine glass store and you could make everything, every single niche we talk about. You can make country girl wine glasses. You can make vegan wine glasses. You can make bass fishing wine glasses. You could do all that stuff with just by choosing one product. Yeah, absolutely. So products can be niches too. Hey, mm-hmm. check this out. Let me let me throw this in here real quick because this is. Uh, I was going to share this from our back end on the um, the way to validate. You guys, may throw that in there. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Like the goals and stuff. Hang on just a second. Let me grab it. I'm sorry. Um, one uh, comment here or question, and I love this. Uh, their mm-hmm. best-selling shirt is a girl-dominated niche that she has a boy-themed shirt of. Is there a poss- is it a possibility to do a brand kind of like that, where it's more of a girl-oriented thing for boys? I love that. I think it's fantastic. And there are so many different areas where either girls or boys are underrepresented. So think of real men knit, real men sew, real yeah. men. You know, Lance would love the the like, knit <laughs> one pieces, right? Remember the knit yeah. one pieces? Like there are legitimately people <laughs> that are into things that lean more traditionally feminine or masculine, and like they're underserved. Meggings. Meggings all day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so just just as an example, if we if we looked at the thing over in the chat where it says you know your top five list, you put together a spreadsheet. I mean, I would go out and find you know, vegan magazines. I would go out and find vegan groups on Facebook. <laughs> I would go out and find uh, you know some some type of vegan books maybe that you can find online via Amazon and see what type of reviews they're getting and what people are commenting about and start to put together all these different resources for uh, you know hobbies and. Uh, hobbies that vegans do i mean there, there might be some type of vegan meetup or thing or something that people all get together and talk about but if you can get those things into a spreadsheet and then start there and be able to look at them and then be able to start digging down into those and see what kind of traffic you have that's kind of what we're saying whenever we, we want to get you guys to validate your niche to be able to get it on paper and and, and come up with things that you can d- dive into and research and go okay this this particular magazine has this many people that subscribe to it and on Facebook, this group that's called Vegans, it has this many people in the group, and this is what they're saying. And then to be able to step back and take a look at it. Yeah. Yeah. One little secret that I've used a lot over the years is if you find a website that's really big, like say, take a magazine. Magazines almost always have a uh, media kit, and they will tell you exactly who your audience is. So if you find some sort of a vegan um, magazine, Right. And you go to their website and you scroll down to the bottom. There's normally a media kit. And if you download their media kit, normally they'll tell you we have this many people. This is the male demographic split. This is how old they are. This is their interest. There's there's like a ton of information inside of advertising media kit. So that can help you niche down a little bit, too, or at least find a little bit more out about your demographic as well. Yeah. Um, the. Uh... The metal question was in regards to the shine on jewelry, I believe. Yeah, in the video. Uh, that is inven- there is no inventory with shine on. So the, the stuff that I'm doing is 100% print on demand. And it is, um, you know, I, I won't hold any inventory. The thing I like about shine on is they ship within three days. And that's a good buyer experience. You guys know I'm very against the whole Chinese drop shipping thing because it's and just it's one I've service. I've held the stuff I've seen yeah. it it's beautiful their stuff is legit I bought it I've done it for my mom like I've gotten stuff for my mom for for uh, I don't know a birthday or Mother's Day or something and I put pictures of her grandkids on it so and there's I mean there's a total niche in there like you know grandma's favorite jewelry or uh, you know, to the moon and back, all the all the stuff that we've all seen a hundred thousand times. I think that's trademark, by the way. But um, think and, about you know too. Uh, um, there are a lot of grandmas that are super glamorous and over the grandma. top. I know several glamas. That's exactly where I was going. And like you, my can mom's a grand. grandma. Yeah, <laughs> we've got a couple around here. But yes. Uh, <laughs> The uh, shine on the thing is there's no inventory. I don't hold inventory. I don't like it. I want somebody else to pay 
to hold the inventory, not me. Okay. One of my possible niches is funny aprons. Is this too narrow? Especially if I ever want to add other products someday. I don't think so. I think it's great. No. Make and, the best apron yeah. right online. Like yeah. <laughs> And there, I don't even think there would be a need to add more products, but if you ever wanted to, sure. Now maybe it's a kitchen utensil or something. Right. Yeah. Take, take the apron fun. thing and you can make, take the, take everything we talked about. Real men cook, real men, you know, like you could do the, the gender flip thing. You can do the um, bar, you know, barbecue thing. You can do the, there's, there's so many things, you know, this grandma, is the best cook in town. There's a thousand different things you could put on an apron that you could make an entire store around aprons without a doubt. And I don't think it's too niche. I think, you know, you call it the apron depot or whatever it is, and you just do nothing but apron designs. Yeah, you I like know, that idea. Like a lot of your um, that's uh, a good one. merch stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so with a vegan and vegetarian, um, she's got a bunch of good ideas from those that we have shared. So she's good. Um, can you have a niche that's too big? One of them I'm researching is funny bridal gifts or bachelorette party items. I, I would mean, choose one of those. I think it's two different niches. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I would, I mean, I don't say it's, I wouldn't think that it's too wide, and I, th I think, though, that you have to kind of think about the, the woman that you're targeting, and that's how you niche down. Like, there are certain girls that are going to want a really nice, classy bachelorette party <laughs> and bridal party, you know. And I'm laughing because, like, obviously, I didn't have a classy one, right? It was like, woohoo! And th so that's another niche. So, like, kind of, you could niche it down by the, the avatar, that you would like to, you know, cater to. And funny is a really what, good way to do it. There's a certain person that's gonna like funny, you know, bridal stuff, so. Humor always sells. The, the, I, on every one of my Amazon listings, I put the word funny in front of it, regardless of whether it's funny or not. Mm -hmm. And it helps. Yeah. <laughs> Everything I do, I put funny. This is funny, because people wanna be funny. Okay, let's see looking oh yeah someone suggested um looking for blogs in your niche is another good way to validate it <laughs> yeah not only that but if you do find some that are pretty active and and as you're starting to build your you know out your store or your brand or whatever whichever route you're deciding to take i would start cultivating that relationship early on with those people and interacting with them um because by the time you get your brand set up and established, you will already have a relationship with them. And you're not just going to be coming in and going, hey, I've got this for you. And I think your audience would benefit from it. Go into those groups and those blogs or participate with them. Maybe offer to do a, a guest writing thing for them and, or some way to get involved with them and give something. And hopefully maybe down the road, you'll get something in return whenever your brand's ready to be launched, you know. Here, there's another little tip, and I saw somebody mention that they were doing it, is if you're going out and you're looking at the Facebook stuff, always like the page. And if you if they sell stuff on that page, go to any product on that page and click add to cart. When you do that, they're going to treat you differently because if they're doing their stuff correctly, you're going to start seeing a lot of their ads. And there are ways to see their ads anyway, but you want them, you just, go in and act like you're a customer, a customer that doesn't buy and see do, but at least like the page because that's going to bring up their feed. That's going to come up in your feed more often. So you can start to just learn more about the niche without having to like go out and research stuff. You can just sit there and when you log into Facebook, they're going to pop up a new you know, vegan post or a new um, uh, yoga post or whatever it is. But um, you know, just go out and like a ton of pages and you'll start to see niche has their own verbiage every niche has their own language you know pod uh, merch go up to 100 people on the street and say hey you know i do merch and they're going to look at you like you have five heads like it's yeah. not we all have our own logo or our own lingo so one way to kind of speed up that learning curve is if you're not real familiar with a niche is just like a bunch of pages and if they sell product start clicking on stuff 
and add stuff to carts. And when, you know, and when we get further down in the process, that also makes it easier to kind of curate content. <laughs> and, you know, in my feed, when I see something that makes me stop and look at it, then I'm like, my audience is probably going to like that too. And so I will share it with my thoughts on it, you know, whether it's a picture or whatever. Um, and and um, share that on your, you know, Facebook page or group when we get there. But get that set up ahead of time now. Um, I've gone through the niche validation process and found a pretty active audience for gymnastic moms. Those are the buy things for their gymnastic kids. So I'm happy with that, but I've struggled to find pod products for the niche, such as leotards or metal holders, like Bree suggested. I'm a fan of no inventory too. So does that invalidate the niche? No, absolutely not. Um, you don't need to do the metal holder thing. That was just a, a, an example of something very niche that gymnastic figure skating dance world girls it resonates with them but there's lots and lots of things that are examples um it's just a passionate niche and they're down to spend cash um i mean you could it just have to be. Like to be a gymnastics you're dropping cash like they, they have to have a certain level of money to be in that world so and, and they like things like absolutely like leggings uh, a lot of the girls are wearing the leggings to school to say hey i'm a gymnast you know and you then do a whole gymnastic whole coaching, coach gifts i bet you there's a time of year or maybe it's i don't know when it is but i bet you every single gymnast gets their coach a gift at some point yep. so you could probably just make a whole niche out of coach gifts i've sold a crap load of gymnast uh, gymnast stuff believe it or not um, gymnast mom, gymnast dad, grandma, grandpa. I've got designs where it's, it's all the states and I've got a gymnast doing some type of move and I've taken words like mom and then I've, the, on the O, I've had the, the girl hanging like she's hanging from, you know, a parallel bar or something underneath the O. I mean, there's all kinds of things that you can do and it's, like Aaron said, the, the people that are buying those things, I mean, think about it. Most of the kids that are doing gymnastics, they don't have, you know, money to spend themselves but their parents have the money yep. so they have some disposable income and they want to be proud of their kids so they're they're the ones that are actually buying it so yep. i would cater more towards those people and also have some of the gymnast stuff as well but you know you might be able to target gymnast moms with the gymnast mom shirt and get them over to your store where you have the leotards and you know the metal holders and all that stuff too the, the happy gymnast i'm seeing the happy gymnast at the, store. the jewelry <laughs> for the moms all day i found motocross mom jewelry and it's selling really well on etsy right so i could easily do that for my brand so if motocross mom is a big enough niche gymnast mom they would love that to have charm bracelets from or the bracelets that they have from shine on or the necklaces and they were really cute like hearts and maybe it said gymnastics mom and then it had their daughter's name or their son's name on the back um there's a lot of so you can target to the kids and the moms or just the kids or just the moms so there's a couple different ways to do that food school practice repeat put it on everything because that's probably the life of a gymnast like they have to do they get go to practice every day i would think yeah. right yeah so uh, training just, stuff that has to do with training like tote bags for um shoving all your stuff in there um to go to practice well, tote bags. you could even break down that niche by the type of like the equipment that they use because i know yeah. some of them do balance beams some of them do floor yes. routines some of them do rings some of them do powers yep. some of them i don't know what all else there is but every single one of those is sub niche of any of that like gymnastics mom you could turn into one with rings, one with a springboard, one with ribbon thing that they do, one with, um, you know what I'm saying, like, or the, the uneven bars or whatever it is. Yep. So all the gymnasts normally have specialties is the way that I understand it, or at least from the Olympics. <laughs> That's the only time I've ever watched gymnastics. <laughs> But um, no, yeah, yeah, it's true. And there's there's usually <coughs> like different classes. That's a right. whole other thing you could do too. Is if you really want to get down into it, you know, I don't know what it's like in in gymnastics, but in figure skating, you have to pass levels, and every level is a big deal and a big celebration. Like now right. you're intermediate, now you're novice. Now it's kind of like karate, right? Like attaining right, right. your um, colored belts. 
And so that's a whole nother idea, celebrating the benchmarks of the development of a gymnast. Like I horse around with a picture of a pommel horse or, yeah. you know, or I don't know. Or I, I'm a little uneven with parallel, uneven parallel bars. or so. There's, yeah, yeah there, gymnastics would be a great niche, I think. And throw so and much. throw some jargon in there that only right. gymnasts know. Right. Like for figure skating, it's the jumps. Unless you watch figure skating, you don't know the names of the jumps and the spins and the moves right. and all that. So throw throw some of that stuff in there too. Well, well, you could take that even one step further by um, like I've got a rhythmic gymnast unicorn on merch by Amazon. You you could take all kinds of different pets. <laughs> I, I seriously have that. It sells. It's like a really cool design. It's, it's like whipping the rhythmic gym, gymnastics thing over its head. <laughs> I love it. I do. I got it. So you, you know, you can take that one step further and, and use you know animals and things. Do a, I, I think I've got a rhythmic gymnastics horse as well. Ninja, ninja would yeah. work. Like people are really into like a nin, the ninja stuff. You know, like gymnast or ninja gymnast. I guess it would be. Yeah. It would be <laughs> to do All right. We just crush somebody's gymnast niche so <laughs> um somebody else said you sell that jewelry fba no that jewelry is made print um it's made on demand yep everything's that's yeah, all printed um my non-camo niche i think i want to target life between the hunt type clothing oh yeah i like that you know clothing for when you're not hunting or something like that um that's actually a good name life between the hunt that's good yeah Ooh. i like that too yeah um the other thing with blogs, I just see somebody here. Th those people are the kind of people that you can reach out to once you have a brand and they will really resonate with whatever you're making because you're making it exclusive to that niche. And those are the type of people that you might want to reach out to for um, like, hey, I'll send you a free necklace if you talk about you know Dr. Wigglebutts on your uh, SPCA blog or whatever it is. Or you know, um, somebody who does a lot of gymnastic stuff, you could reach out to them and they can promote your stuff. Maybe send them something for free so that they wear it. Um, you guys say don't stick to just teas and mugs. I've heard you mention jewelry. What other products do you use for POD? Um, pillows. Yep, pillows. You can make a whole line of pillows just for houses. You could do wall hanging. You can do uh, custom cat has a lot of stuff. I'm big on custom cat. I like custom cat a lot. And they, they have do, flip flops, don't they? They've got flip flops. They've got ornaments. Funny thing, uh, there's a huge opportunity on Etsy right now for pet remembrance ornaments. And that's probably because we just got through December, but filed that away. That'll be something that I offer next year at. Um, on my site, more than likely. I may actually make my site just two or three products. I haven't decided yet. Uh, but there's a lot of print stuff. I would highly recommend taking the list of, didn't we have a list of providers somewhere? Mm, yes, I think we did. Do we have that? Um, if not, then we need to put that somewhere. So you can just go and poke around and look at all kinds of stuff. But there's, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with print on demand. Um, and it's just really, it really is the best way too to kind of like experiment and test the market. I mean, like I went in thinking, oh, this design isn't going to sell on these products or it is going to sell on these. And like, sometimes you're wrong. And so yep. it's easy to just stop making it than it is to return a pallet of 1000 items. Hey, here's something that, that, that mm -hmm. I've done before that anyone that's trying to validate a niche can do. Um, I was I, I was con contemplating building a nursing app to where you could study for your nursing, you know, exam. Right? I know nothing about nursing, so what I did is I got on Upwork and I found somebody that was in the nursing field. And how you could apply this would be you could find that blogger, right? That's got a good following, or you could go find somebody maybe that you know in some group somewhere that's that you find out that's an avid hunter that's a female right or whatever it could be and what i did is i contacted that girl in upwork and i said would you be interested in consulting me on something <coughs> i'll be willing to pay you fifty dollars for one hour of your time and i'd like to ask you a bunch of questions and so she said sure no problem she said just have all the answers 
uh, prepared before we get together and send them to me in a couple of days so I can get, get familiar with them. So you could find out who, who the influencers are, you know, maybe they'll take the time and you know, spend some time with you where you can ask them some questions and you'll probably get a lot of insight to what they're doing. And that girl actually, I decided not to build that app, but she answered a lot of questions for me. And I actually went back to her a second time and paid her another 50 bucks to ask her some questions. So that's another way that you guys can validate something as well. And, you know, you can, um, you'll start to learn if you start to approach influencers, you'll learn kind of what level of audience is still approachable. There just comes this point where an influencer has too large of a following. And if you do reach out, it just gets missed yeah. a lot of the, the messages. But, um, I don't know. There's kind of like that sweet spot of they're not at millions of followers, but maybe they're at tens of thousands of followers sure. and they're still very accessible and willing to work with you too. Um, yeah. So, and I, I'm sure that differs based on the, you know, niche that you're in. Um, but as a general rule of thumb, you know, don't go with somebody with a couple hundred and then don't go with someone in the millions because you probably won't hear back. Not that there's make sure wrong. there's activity too. There's a lot of people who build fake accounts and don't have any kind of yep. uh, following really. You know, they'll, they'll, their account will say they have a hundred thousand people and then yep. there's maybe five likes. There's certain Scan. Kind of that are like that too. Yes. Yes. Scan <laughs> just real quick. Make sure that there's consistency and recency in yep. their posts or whatever they're doing, wherever you're checking them out at. And then just open a couple of their posts and make sure that it's not all spammy responses that you could give to anybody. You wanna look at like some, look at some personal connection in there and interaction, and then they're probably approachable. And if, um, if that's something that you're looking for, you can also reach out to, you know, us. I know that Brianna, Duncan, and Aaron know influencers and experts and yep. some pretty weird niches. So um, they may also be able to help. Yeah, I mean, and as you guys um, really um, nail down, this is where I'm headed. If that is absolutely the case. We've come into contact with so many different people over the years that it's like, it's funny, the, the random <coughs> that we do have and the resources and things to, that we can lean on and, and bring in for you guys too, so. Yeah, not only that, but whenever you're trying to validate it and you put your, start to put your Google spreadsheet together, don't, look, we, we're not expecting you guys to know everything about this stuff. That's, that's why that we're all doing this course is to, we, we wanna be your sounding board. So if the numbers look low, don't be shy and be like, oh, they're gonna think this is not a good thing. No, give us the data that you found because we can, we can pull you aside if we see something and go, hey, you know what? You, you put this in here, but really you overlooked X, Y, Z. And had we not seen what you gave us, we yeah. would have never known you'd overlooked something. So don't hesitate share all of your data with us because it'll give us a good starting point it'll save us a lot of time it'll save you guys a lot of time as well yep yeah absolutely and um i'm going to pop into the group a little bit later and talk to everybody about this but we're trying to make the communication system with you guys a little bit simpler since there's a panel of us or a crew of us and a lot of you guys um, we're looking for a, a linear fashion to be able to know, like, you know, Duncan and Aaron have talked to you or I have talked to you and where we are in those conversations without 5,000 emails. So essentially, um, if you're comfortable with using Google Sheets, I know some of you aren't and that's fine. We'll uh, come up with something else for you. But some of you have already shared those Google Sheets with us. Um, and so it will just consist of changing the um, access so that we can communicate with you guys. We'll make a tab. Um, but again, I'll walk you through it. Don't freak out. <laughs> if you're not tech savvy, I got gotcha. you. And we'll get that set up a little bit later. So just make it easier for us to go back and, and, and watch the evolution of that conversation as, as you build your brand. Hey, somebody's asking a question. Uh, is there a full directory of print on demand somewhere? And Jacob Topping's got probably the best book that I've seen on it. He lists all of them in there. And um, or hit um, hit my uh, website. So if you just go to briannamullergreen.com, there's a tab that just says pod. And it is like a ridiculous listing of absolutely every pod, all of the free uh, graphic sites that I know of. 
um, some weird resources and tools like that. I mean, it's, it, you could like get lost for two weeks just on that page, but um, yeah, definitely scan down through the pods. Like, you know, um, there's some that are specialty. So you might find one that's more gymnastics related or athletic related that you can check out. Are you guys ready for some questions that they dropped into us via email in the group? Sure. All right. Um, all right, this one came in. This is one we saw earlier. And we'll, this was from Pete. And he's asking us, can we recommend any designers? And you guys know that that's what we do at Design for Dollars, is that we can help provide you guys with all kinds of designs for anything that you're doing. So, you know, we're, we're not just trying to help you figure out what your brand is and help you build it. But if there's something that, that we can provide to you, then we'll do it. And, and as a, we'll probably have to powwow on it and figure out what it is. But if you guys want our help with that, then we'll set up something, you know, a special deal for anyone that wants to use that service. So we could definitely help everyone with that. Um, the other question he was asking, he says, whenever you sell shirt, hoodies and canvas stuff, do you put your logo on the product so other people can see where the person bought it from? I don't know. You want to answer that, Bree? Um, I haven't, though. I think as time moves on um, in with particular products, I might. But um, for me, it's kind of like um, like when you go to trademark something, you don't want to just do it and, and hope that it works. Like I wait till things pan out. And if it takes off and you feel the, that it's necessary to do that and add a logo, then you can. Um, but, you know, like I think of a lot of brands that don't necessarily um, have, have a logo on, on everything. But that's kind of more actually the, the importing and the wholesale route where you would actually be really looking at getting the garment tagged with your tag and, and going through all those processes. But if you're gonna go the print on demand route, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. Well, there's some places that offer that you can do it with. Like I think Printful does that, the tag list thing. And I know um, Custom Cat's looking into it, but I don't I do not do it on anything right now. I did reach out to the owner of Shine On to see if I could put my um, uh, website on the back, like in gray to everything that I do. I don't think it's going to be doable, but it's not a deal killer by any means. I just thought I would ask, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, if you, and I know we don't need to get in depth with this, but like on Amazon, if you were to decide to launch the product more as a legit brand and get brand registered and do all of that, they do require your logo to be physically on the product and you have to have images of that. Um, I think but, you know, it's, it's an extra 250 or something to have it put in the thing. So I never did it. But one thing, not that, worth it. yeah, it's not worth it. But one thing, you, do is you have a design that's like on a piece of canvas or, uh, you know, just anything that's single sided. And Aaron and I learned this whenever we were working with Kiss is that Kiss would put a little bitty, I mean, super small, fine print that said Kiss copyright, you know, 2015 or whatever year we were working right. with them. And a I, license number or two. Yeah, so that they, yeah, and a license number mm -hmm. on it. So if you've got some, some, some type of single sided print, uh, that, you know, it's not front and back or a tag or anything like that. You can include it in the actual artwork design so that, you know, you're getting a little bit of brand recognition and you could also have proof that you are actually, you know, selling it in the marketplace should you need to send somebody a C and D or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking of that vintage one that I have listed for sale. When you look at the graphic right in the corner, you know, with t-shirts, especially like concert t-shirts and stuff, you'll have, you'll see that little print there and you can put that right in your PNG files. All right, you guys it also, it also lets you know if somebody copied your design pixel for pixel <laughs> because yeah. the stuff's in there. Hey daddy, did you know my glasses Here's are one. covered with snow? Here's one for you guys. Uh, this was addressed to you, Bree, but it touches on what we were talking about a minute ago about you know, just put the numbers in a spreadsheet, but it's, uh, you sent me some keywords, but they didn't have much search volume. Is there a number that is minimum? And that's from, uh, I think Darlene. Yeah, Darlene. Mm -hmm. um, what you really, what you want to do guys is consider synonyms. My, my, my favorite story that I've told a couple times, right? That I was using four wheeling 
with the number four dash wheeling. That is not even close to the top uh, keyword I can use. So to identify that though, when I'm using, for instance, keywords everywhere, I'm going to click around and click around and click around and click around until, you know, go to those suggested keywords. Okay, that looks better. More search volume. I'm going to click on that one though and expand upon <coughs> it and see what else they suggest. And maybe, maybe I'll find that I've gone too far and that I got to go back and start again with that keyword. But just kind of follow that trail of synonyms moving the words around too. Like, okay, there's not a lot of search volume for four wheeling shirts, but guess what? Sometimes shirts for four wheelers might have a ton of search volume. I don't know what people are thinking when they're, when they're typing these things in, we don't all think the same, but you can somewhat validate your niche by playing with those strings of, of keywords, move them around a bit. The other thing is uh, that plugin isn't really accurate with the number of uh, searches. I don't, I don't really look at that number at all. I don't care. I, I'm more interested. In I, I use it for like a priority level right, too, right. you know, like more versus less. Yes. I'm not going to look at the thing where there's like a search volume of 10, but you know, if it's the, hundreds and thousands. If it's showing zero searches, you know, it's wrong because it's not going to show it unless the search exists. So think of it more like a scale of one to 10. The first thing that comes up that has a ton of stuff, that's a 10. And then everything else kind of trickles down as far as volume. But and I don't really look at the search volume with any credence. And that's one one piece of evidence, really. Right. Because, you know, and that's why we say, like, you could go to Etsy. You can use other tools because you may unearth and uncover a little something over there that maybe wasn't revealed with keywords everywhere. Um, I had a, I had one from JT and one from Laura for, that came from the group, but we already answered both of those. If you guys need any more info on the questions that you guys ask in the group, which were pretty much the same as you asked on this call, let us know. Um, here's one from Lance. Uh, let me add this one in here. Uh, is anyone using Pillow Profits on Amazon Seller Central? I have their app in Shopify and just wondered if anyone has experience with them. They have some cool products that I think might work well with my niche I'm looking into. I've never used them. I don't even know who they are. Um, I, I know who they are. Hold on one second. And I'm going to pull up the Trello board. Somewhere in the Trello board, I have, um, I think, some comments that I have kind of gathered in my reviews of pillow profits and if i remember correctly um the it were it was uh there were good reviews but i want to say they're not us based there's four, four they have a 4.8 stars out of 751 votes i would say that they're probably pretty decent yeah but um, I, i've never worked with them so i don't know but you know right, success think... leaves clues <laughs> That's one of them. I'll see if I can find um, more information. I have more information on Pillow Profits. I read a bunch of reviews like that by other leaders in the space that have used Pillow Profits, and um, they were all good uh, reviews. They have the they have shoes too. It I looks think. like a huge Asian market is using them. Like every all of their, um, I wonder if they're based over in Asia. Their whole team looks. Asian except Adam is a pillow enthusiast <laughs> and they have um like high tops uh sneakers and they even had like suit luggage hmm. are right, you guys ready for another one yep I, I don't know what this means but it's from Heather she says for the domains on week two worksheet do we use Amazon Pinterest Amazon comma Pinterest are ones that are used a lot that are not those ones. So you're trying to, I think she's identify, trying to identify like websites, right? And don't make um, websites and groups and things of that nature. You can go on Amazon, you can search on Pinterest, you can search um, on Facebook, like literally just go to Facebook. Like you're a person looking for a group about whatever dogs or something and see what comes up. Find the Facebook groups that have the most people. A lot of times they also have a website attached to them. So then you could grab the website from there. So we're just showing you a variety of ways to all approach one subject. 
uh, or one task. And sometimes you got to use all of them to get a really global view of what's going on. And sometimes one method kills it and you get all the information you need. Um, but, you know. Just as a heads up, Pillow Profits is shipping from Eastern Asia. Okay. So that's something I, they mentioned there. Um, the quality is outstanding. Our shipping times are competitive and our pricing is unbeatable. I don't know. I can't see. I don't have their app or whatever, but I, I can't see the shipping times. But I would double check that beforehand because if it's coming from Eastern Asia, I would think that it's going to be at least seven days or something. I don't know. Before they ship it. And it might take them two to three days to print it. So keep it in mind. Um, one, one other one though, to look at, um, is, which is a Shopify app, check out WC fulfillment. Yeah. That guy's cool. I, the, I, yeah. And that way, like, if you're good. looking for something alternative, like the person that's looking at pillow profits, go check out that, you know, and custom cap. WC fulfillment does watches too. I've seen, they do watches. I'm, I'm doing their hooded do... blankets. Are you? Okay. Yeah. I, I haven't. Is that a thing? Like to like, me, that's just so far off my radar. Like, who wants a hooded blanket? <laughs> gamers, gamer people are into it. Um, really? like that them, makes sense. We like Hands it for free. camping, right? Because yeah. you're around the fire in your like chair, and you have a blanket, and you can just like kind of. See, I just yeah. wrap a blanket around me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then it's split. You need your head to hold it up. Like a caveman. Jeez. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. I, we don't I, all I, just like wrap up, like, you know. Don't target me for a hooded uh, blanket. That's. <laughs> if you're going to do hooded blankets, this. don't target me. Aaron, is that a thing? <laughs> I don't know. I really. <laughs> Uh, I've got one here for, I'm trying to remember who it was from because when I copied it over, I think I took out the name, but just give me one second and I'll tell you who it is. Here's um, why you're looking that up. Uh, somebody I, said, have you seen interest print? Yeah. And I have, I have not, I've never heard of them, but I I'm looking them up right now. Um, let me just drop it in and then we can answer it. Okay. I, I think it might be from Melanie maybe. She's talking about, uh, she said, the two niches that I presented are Ultimate Frisbee and 1970s Nostalgia. When I try to find products or sites to either fill in the domain name list or check to see if there are other products selling, I'm not getting results that are helpful. Maybe I'm searching wrong. Um, I've actually sold one of my best-selling shirts in the print-on-demand is actually an Ultimate Frisbee shirt. It's, it's in my top 10. And I would keep digging around in disc golf, yeah. Ultimate Frisbee, um, you know, there's, you know, I don't know what those, they throw the Frisbee into this chain thing and that, that's golf. Yeah. Frisbee golf. You've got Frisbee mm -hmm. golf, diff golf, disc golf, ultimate Frisbee. Uh, there's actually an ultimate Frisbee league actually. So there's a lot of different things in that niche that. Where do they play it? Like. A lot, Where like on golf, on, a lot of them play on golf courses. Like well, that might be something else to kind of like expand on. Yeah, too. soccer fields. I, I would think though that, and I don't know that much about the niche, but it, it won't stop me from selling the shirt. Um, if, I mean, a frisbee, it's like a solo thing, and you're not really wearing any like gear or anything. So you're probably going to be limited in the number of products that you could sell them. Um, maybe. But there's there's probably you know like that gold thing that's got the chains on it. There's there's probably some things, but I'm just not familiar enough with the niche to know. But I can tell you those people are passionate, and there is a small subculture of, of people that will buy things from that for sure. Yeah. As far as the the '70s nostalgia, I'm thinking um, for research, think of words and styles of clothing that we all associate <coughs> with that era or sayings and kind of go from there. Like I'm thinking if you, you'll probably find something under hippie, bohemian. Um, let me think what else. And try hippie with two, uh, both um, versions of the spelling. Sometimes you see it with a Y and sometimes you see it with an IE. Um, boho is another one. And I don't know where you want to go with the 1970s nostalgia. My experience is apparel related. So, um, you know, it could be um, 
think about this. Uh, not that everybody that liked this is into the 70s, but you have shows like that 70s show, right? That's a little bit wider audience, but there may be other shows that even are even more niche about life in the 70s. I don't know, documentaries. Look, look for things like that. Uh, she also, whenever she was asking about that, she said she found board games and books and candy that all looked like they were made in the 70s. So that, mm -hmm. that might, I mean, is that spark an idea with you, Brie? Yeah, um, like I've given those as gifts before um, where you're, you know, if you're a baby of the 80s or the 70s and you get like this gift of, of the different nostalgic candy. So even use those as search terms, right? There, there are fans of some of those candies and things. Um, there are even fans that are even really niche. Like I'm thinking about in my eBay experience, they're like fans of, of like glassware with a certain name or a certain look, right? Like fans of carnival glass and fans of, uh, you know, I don't even know, white hobnail vases. <laughs> I just made that one up, but <laughs> You get it. Like there are people that are diehard fans of this kind of thing. So poke around and see all of the different things that you can recollect from the seventies that people are passionate about. Maybe it's, you know, we talked about the example of, was it on here that we talked about rotary phones, you know, look for, look for things like that, that evoke that retro, you know, feel and try hey, to find the people. Yeah. Here's one. Uh, and I don't know anything about this, but uh, they, and, and I think, Somebody answered it in the group, but keywords everywhere. Somebody started to go down that rabbit hole and they came out on the other side of the earth. We got a hundred keywords ranging from 10 to, you know, 10,000. Uh, is there a good cutoff point or the more, the better? I've, I've never used that tool. I don't know. It's, how long is a piece of string? You just keep, <laughs> it, it depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, if you're just trying to get ideas of where these people hang out, then if you have a good, target like if, if if you verify that niche if you think that there's enough there where you can turn it into a brand then you're good but it never hurts to you can't over research but if it prevents you from going to the next stage of the process you're over researching like that, that and like kind of, of what i did was i took a look at the research right and let's say that the the thing that was uh, most highly liked had 2 million likes at or 2 million searches or whatever. Just look at your range, right? And say, my range is zero to whatever, and I'm gonna keep the top 10% because those are the ones that are, are probably gonna be able to rank for it, that there's a lot of search volume for. Just set, set something like that for yourself uh, by looking at the range that exists for your particular niche. And then you'll find more along the way like I've done. You know, every once in a while, I'm like, whoa, what the heck? I never would have thought of that. All right, add it to the list. Hey, did Laura Burke move on from the bullying, anti-bullying thing, or is that something we... Yeah, I believe, um, Laura, are you going the... V I think she's going vegan. Vegan. Okay, cool. All right, cool. All right. I would, I, I like the vegan niche over anti-bullying yeah. niche, personally. I think there's more opportunity in the vegan niche. Yeah. Hey, you know what else you could do on that, Laura, is um, a, a lot of, I used to date a girl that was a vegan, and she started out vegetarian, and so you could probably also target vegetarians, because eventually some of those, you know, people that are into, you know, healthy eating lifestyle will transition into veganism, uh, and a lot of times the people that are vegetarians are hanging out with the vegans too, so I wouldn't limit myself, even though it's a vegan brand that you're trying to build i wouldn't since that market or since that audience is is very sub niche down uh of foodies i wouldn't limit myself to just vegans i would go vegetarians and pescatarians as well you can even say i started out as a vegetarian and then i graduated to vegan or something yeah. you know, put a little yeah. graduation cap on it <laughs> and also um this is is a completely separate niche but yet it's kind of related and maybe poke around to just see like how big the the audience is but um you know a couple of people that i know that are into veganism are also into like energy levels and um like crystals and that's kind of like a whole like healthy lifestyle of of being 
you know, like um, not putting toxins into your body. Um, and so, you know, that kind of, you can kind of go that route too. The other thing that's interesting about vegans, and I have a buddy who's a vegan and he's told me on countless occasions that it's very, everything that's out there for vegans right now is very skewed towards the female audience. And he was actually considering building a brand around being a male vegan because he just thinks it's an underserved audience. So well, yeah, because I think the cliche, the, the typical stereotype, you know, in the past was a man is supposed to eat meat, right? We didn't back well, 150 yes. years ago, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a meat and potatoes guy, so I'll, I'll give vegans crap all day long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't have any more that, that I can find unless mm -hmm. I miss something. Cool. How um how are you guys doing in uh, for our attendees? Are we covering all your questions? Any other questions? Oh, she said interesting. The Facebook audience insights show seventy eight percent female for veganism. Yeah, but now think about that. The flip side of that is that there's twenty two percent male who are probably underserved. So. I'm not saying that you just create something for men. I'm just saying keep that in mind. It's probably an underserved niche. For the girls not. who are trying to get their men to go vegan. Yeah. I will definitely keep your friend in mind. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other questions? Oh, did Aaron freeze for you guys or am I frozen? No, I, I think everybody just stopped talking. Did Aaron freeze? Yeah, he froze. He's okay. gone. <laughs> well, if, uh, if you guys don't have any other questions, I think we're gonna wrap it up. Um, we've got, um, let's see here, homework assignments due tomorrow. So make sure, let me see here. We've got, I've got the uh, assignment up. So you're validating, you're making sure that you've got, um, where the heck is it? I have the sheet pulled up here somewhere in one of my 500 different tabs. Okay, here it is. So you've got to have your, um, your top five lists. So five domains, you want to have Facebook, Instagram pages and interests, um, magazines, publications and or associations. Also, we are uh, looking at um, uh, pain points for your niches, things that they struggle with, that irritate them, maybe problems that need to be solved. Um, and then goal number three, go through that validation task where we gave you all of the different things we wanted you to take a look at. And um, if you can get those to us um, Friday, I think what we'd like to start doing is taking a look at them a little bit earlier and then again, you know, like I said before, we will communicate with you guys or try to communicate through Google. Um, so we'll get that set up as well. And that way you can get instant feedback. And instead of this weird, you know, uh, messy network of emails back and forth with all of us, we'll all just be able to chat on your, on your Google Sheets. So we'll get that. There's Aaron. We're just wrapping up. Um, I was just telling went back yep just went back over the assignment for the week said if they can get it in tomorrow we'll start looking at them over the weekend um and then if they have to work through the weekend you know sunday by the latest please have that in so do you want to go over how you want them to do their google sheets or do we want to send uh, yeah, something you know what? something in the group let me just or... do it i could just show them right now absolutely um and let's do a video too just so that people can yep. sounds good um let me find the brandability one that we already have up hey while, while she's looking for that um i know that whenever i started doing the online thing that whenever i was creating a customer avatar for this real estate software that i was getting ready to create the the thing that i could could not wrap my brain around was and it's in this it says uh you know five passions and or pain points for your niche and i, I always thought it was like what is that, you know? And so if we, we could circle back around and maybe touch on that a little bit, because I know personally for me, that was difficult for me to wrap my brain around, but I don't want to disrupt the flow, but maybe we can touch back on it. 
Um, I think for me, it was more right now, it's really surface the way that I answer that. And it's things like all of us in motorsports get really irritated when you go too slow and you're in our way. So like, <laughs> There's a lot of things that can be designed around that simple thing that we all share, almost like road rage, right? So there are <clears throat> just things along those lines. Um, they don't have to be super serious or um, very, I don't know how to say it. Like it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, related to something that is an actual physical struggle. Just right. how are you going to speak to that audience? Like for my stuff people want to show they love their animals like that's that's the that's the problem that's the pain point they they yeah. want to it's not like you know i mean some of them may have lost a pet which is definitely a more serious pain point but it doesn't have to be ground shaking it's just why why would they buy something you know is it and and having it be a cop-out gift is a reason you know if you're doing an apron store and you're looking <laughs> every year Christmas, Father's Day, Mother's Day, my sister and I text each other, any ideas for mom or dad, right? That's a pain point. That's a problem. I don't know what to get my mom. I don't know what to get my dad. They have everything that they need already. What what, what do I get them? Okay, well, if there's an apron that says, you know, gr grill master or whatever it is, it's, <laughs> uh, thanks, Christine. Um, yeah, it's, that's the pain point is we're trying to find a gift that can be yeah. the pain for a hundred percent even even like uh, a pain point for me was just lack of good designs that yes. were related to motorsports like everything's really like the pod competitors their, their mock-ups aren't even like aligned correctly and right. they all have the same sayings over and over again so yeah. and you can also go to the other extreme like um it doesn't necessarily have to be pain points but it could be extreme <laughs> things that they're passionate about that are going that are unique to that audience yeah how do i how do i show my love for this in a unique way mm -hmm. people want that's a pain point you know how do i show my love for my animal in a way that nobody else is doing because it's special you know so for me it'll be hey i'm going to upload a picture of my dog and i'll get their name engraved on it or um i'm going to sell the um you know, it's a dog tag. Like they literally, it's a literal dog tag. So guess what? You can go to Petco and pay $3 for the cheap little plate that you get, or you can spoil your pet and show them how much you love them by getting this thing, which is 14 karat gold. Think of how many Chihuahua owners want a freaking gold tag hanging around their dog when they carry it through the airport with their support animal. Like that's yeah. who I'm going after. You know, that's who I want. I want the person who's Why like, am I, I your avatar too? I'm only supposed to be Jill's avatar. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you know I've traveled that way, right? With because both chihuahuas. <laughs> I know for me, whenever I was doing the real estate software, I found out that my audience was primarily 35 to 45 year old women that were either had a couple of kids or were recently divorced and they uh, or the, the ones that were married. And I surveyed my group to figure this out. And then I started to build my fictitious avatar around this 35 to 45 year old women who either graduated high school or had some college, got into real estate because their husband is a full-time worker and she was working at home and she felt like she wanted to actually contribute more to the household. And then her pain point was, my husband you know, wants me to contribute. I, I don't feel worthy. I want to be able to contribute. I don't want to just be a stay at home mom or a single or a married mom staying at home, being a housekeeper. I want to earn an extra few thousand dollars a year. And I wish I had more time to be able to do it, but I don't know how to get started. So those were the pain points. And, and the good things that, that she wanted was she wanted to be able to earn that. So to make her feel better, make her feel proud. So like Bree was That's saying, the huge pain point is contribution. Yeah. I want yeah. to contribute. I want to contribute to the household. Yeah. So the, the, the <laughs> points, you know, the positive and negatives, you want to be able to identify them because like Aaron and Bree both said, whenever you're setting up your products and you're writing your product description or your mission statement or the way that your store looks, you want to be able to talk to that person visually when they hit your site. So it's, it, you have to be able to, to create that customer avatar to get them to, uh, you know, buy into to what you're trying to sell them. 
And I mean, it's even as if you're a visual person, like when you're building that avatar, make it as stereotype as possible. Like, you know, it's, it's, who are you envisioning coming? Like, what are, what are all the behaviors and interests Ooh. and passions and pain points, everything that make up this fictitious avatar of this like ideal customer that comes to your site? What, even in some cases, like veganism, what do they eat? What do they do? What do they wear? What are they worried about? All yeah. of those things, take those into account and build this ideal avatar. Yeah, you know what I did is I actually took the post-it notes and I would write, I had like a wheel set up. And I, I, I remember that, dude. Do you have a picture yeah. of that? It yeah. was crazy. It was, yeah. it was a, crazy. I had a wheel on, the, on my wall and her name was Jane. She was in between 35 and 45. She was, you know, uh, married. Uh, she was stay at home, you know, mom. And I had all these things. She drives a minivan. It's red. Mm -hmm. and she's got two brothers and a sister and she's the youngest. And I went into all of this detail. So I, whenever I was sending out emails to them, I knew exactly who I was talking to. And the people that I weren't, that I wasn't talking to, it would repel them anyway. So I didn't, I, I wanted to get those people off of my list and not be my customer because I really wanted to talk to this very focused customer that, that I found out that was the vast majority of my customers, you know? So if I can skim off, if I have 200 customers, if I can skim off 50 and talk to 150 directly, those people are, it's good. My message is going to, and my products are going to resonate with them more. I don't care about the other 50. The 80, 20, 80, 20 rule. 80% yeah. so, of your ideal customer. You so, use our own community as the example, right? Would we expect everybody in our outside real lives to understand our lingo and what irritates us and what drives us and what makes us passionate <coughs> in the common pod? No, we are a totally different avatar if you're going to create a product and market it to us than, say, our friend who can't even wrap their mind around what we do. And yeah. so that's what you do with each of those communities. Yep. Is you actually want to resonate with certain people more than others. And, and there's a lot of people that even go out and, and will say, you almost want to repel some people. Yes. Because, you know, you, you, you're speaking to those that are going to convert. Who cares about yep. the people that aren't interested? In fact, re, you know, almost repel them. Yeah. Get them out. Somebody said, I used to mock up today with my sister. And she was like, oh. what? <laughs> Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I mean, my husband hears it all day. Right. And I'll still, I still will use lingo with him. And he's like, Nope, I don't know. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. When, hey, I, when I talk to my wife about what I do, her eyes just glaze over and she goes, I, I don't, I don't know. What you do. uh, <laughs> or I get, or I get this. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A quiz following this, and I know you're gonna fail it. <laughs> That's why it's also important to pick something that you actually enjoy doing. Because if if, if you're gonna build a brand that's that's gonna you know have some legs to it, you need to enjoy it. And so, pick something. That, that was you... actually somebody who's in a different time zone. They already filled out their form this week for um, uh, week two, and they said that that was something that they learned that they that they do need to care about it because they're spending this much time effort and energy in doing it yeah. and it's too uh, easy you know, to give up when it's not something that right. you're interested in because right. it it just becomes monotonous and it becomes work yeah, yeah. hey and here's well, the other thing i'm gonna add too actually hang on hold that thought i'll show you i'll show you guys something I think how long how long are we holding on here? No, I'm gonna show you something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had, I had to put my pants back on. I was just joking. <laughs> hey, so um, one of the like, oh yeah, is that the thing we were looking at? Yeah, no, we, we Aaron and I were actually looking at white labeling these two products, right? And you know, I had some sore muscles, and I'm I saw so I ordered some stuff offline. And I ordered it through Amazon and I used it. It was like that blue emu stuff, right? And I was like, man, this stuff actually works. And I was telling Aaron about it. And we got to looking at it and I found a guy that actually white labels this company's stuff right here. This was actually, it. it's called uh, Purea or whatever it is, Mother of All Creams. And this is another one here, Penetrex. Is and this they like both a mentholated one? 
like a mentholated. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, they're supposed to be like all natural mentholated, right? It's like yeah. icy hot, essentially. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, it's it's good stuff. It works. But Aaron and I started looking at white labeling that, and we lost interest because we're like, man, I don't. I'm just not that passionate about it. Right. You know? Just give me the stuff. It works. I'm cool. I need to move on. Yeah. So, but if you're someone that maybe has arthritis or something and you find a product that you really believe in that you can get behind, then that would make sense for you to do it. But Aaron and I were just like, nah, it's not for us, man. Let's just kind of move on. But we actually dug into it pretty deep. Aaron was going to fly in because Aaron's from Cincinnati. He and I were going to go up to where this company, this white labeling company that actually makes this stuff right here uh, and white label the same thing. But we just didn't after we dug into it and spent a little time and money and effort, we're like, nah, dude, I ain't that passionate about it. Are you? And he's like, nah, I ain't either. So we, I'm not we, passionate enough about it to have inventory on it. Cause they, yeah. they, did they do print on demand? I don't remember. I, I also looked at a dog supplement company that uh, white label stuff, but I, the, here's what you guys have to understand. Almost everything is print on demand to a certain level. All these celebrities who have their own salons and they have their own line of stuff. Paul Mitchell and all that jazz. It's all white labeled. They don't make that stuff. They have, they make the bottle, they make the design. And then they have, they go to the company that does like 500 products of hair conditioner and shampoo and all that stuff. And they just slap their logo on it. It's literally, it's print on demand, but they have, you know, those guys pay for inventory and stuff. But at the end of the day, you can, you can do almost anything where you can pay somebody to put your logo on it and sell something. You don't have to eat the shampoo. You don't have to formulate the hair pomade or cream or gel or whatever. You can find stuff that's already out there. They'll add your scent to it, you know, or whatever it is, you know, like, Hey, I want it to smell like spearmint or whatever it is. And then that's your line. That's your brand. And you can go out and sell that. All along. Like, I mean, yeah. there's, if and, anyone wants a connection like that, it's the exact same thing. I have the exact same story. Mine was about tea. I wanted to get into white labeling some tea and it was local or not local, uh, domestic. Everything's domestic. I met with a guy online and started working towards it. Again, I lost interest, but that's another you know thing. If anyone wants to do something with tea, you can have this, this company. I think it was called Art of Tea actually. Um, you pick the container you want it in, you send them the art for the the label and they, they do everything. So essentially it's print on demand tea, yeah. really. Yeah, but you didn't really have a passion for it. It probably waned for you after a little while. It did, like, oh, yeah. We met a couple of times and I just wasn't really into it enough. I got into the loose leaf tea movement like everybody and I went to the, the online parties and I had the press and the, you know, all the loose leaf tea accessories and then I fell out of it <laughs> i think i mentioned it. i always did the essential oils mm -hmm. i was about ready to do a full line of essential oils and i had where is it i think i have it in here is this the thing yeah this is the company <laughs> and they sent me this stuff for free which i god this was a couple years ago i didn't even realize i had all these i have all this stuff that they sent me for free yeah because i was i was gonna i was gonna manufacture stuff you know but basically not making the oils i'm not doing stuff this yeah, is here, print on demand here's here, here's the thing Aaron, because jill asked uh, glasscock awesome. asking why not essential oils right and that's what that's the problem aaron and i ran into with this is that we couldn't in order to be able to compete in the marketplace without a unique selling point aaron and i couldn't buy enough of this stuff in a large enough quantity to have the price low enough that our margins would be good enough that we could actually compete with the people who are actually in the market. So Jill, to, to answer your question, Aaron didn't get into the essential oils things because we don't, you, we didn't want to buy the inventory at a large enough scale to drive the prices down and then to figure out later, oh, well, this isn't working. Now we're stuck with all this inventory. Right, and the other problem is there's, how many oils in here? I think there's three, five, there's 10 oils. So from a stocking inventory, I had to buy 10 different oils. I had to have the supply for 10 different oils. And my, my startup cost, I think was going to be around 15 or 20,000. And it wasn't something that I was passionate enough about or really knew enough about. I just knew a lot of people are being absolutely brainwashed and the, the doTERRA young living thing, it's all multi-level marketing. 
And it's so crazy to me that like they attach the multi-level marketing thing to it when people don't really give a shit. So a lot of people just want to buy their, their oils. They don't really care about the MLM side of it, but somehow they were getting roped into buying their own stuff every month in order to keep a membership or something. There was all kinds of craziness that was going on with it. But the more I got into it, I realized the two major players, Young Living and um, doTERRA, doTERRA they, they branded, they had brainwashed so heavily these people who, who could swear that they could tell the difference between one and the other. And it's absolutely Aaron knows because people. the way that the process works, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that you're taking plants and you're extracting the oil from the plant. So there's no, there's nothing better about one from another one. So, you know, it, it, but it's really heavily ingrained in their heads that doTERRA is the best or young the best, you know, or whatever it's called. Um, yeah. And I didn't want to go up against that because I wasn't going to do, I wasn't, my whole angle was going to be, we're not the MLM garbage uh, because I, I, I know that there's people who are uh, buy that stuff who don't want to do the MLM stuff and they yeah. wind up buying product all the time because they're forced to. And, and, and how we got here was actually talking about, you know, don't get into something that's going to be painful for you to participate in because then it will turn into a job. Yep. So, right. you know, make sure you pick, pick something that you actually like. Um, and that's why we're here is we're here to help you guys and share these experiences with you guys, because we've chosen some things that we thought, Oh, this would be great. And this would be sexy. And it looks like it's profitable. And we get into it. We're like, Oh no, this isn't that good. Oh, we actually can't compete. Oh, we better go the other way. So that's why we're here to help you guys hopefully not make the same mistakes that we've made, you know? Well, that's why you validate too. Like I'm yeah. sure a lot of you, I've seen it already. A lot of you are going, ah, I don't know if I to do this, Ned. No. Totally cool. Totally. Cool. You, got, you got that spreadsheet. It's better to find out now than go out and build a store and put stuff in it and spend all the time, effort and energy that it takes to do that. And then go, ah, I don't know if this is going to work. Yeah. Okay, so this is just some spreadsheet. I think we used this last week or on one of the lives that I did. Um, what we're going to do is have, I think, so everybody already has a sheet, right? That they've set up. So all you're going to do is when you're looking at a Google sheet in front of you, you're going to just come up here to the corner and hit share. And then um, D4D email a gmail.com as the person and hit send. And then um, all of us are considered D4D email at gmail.com. And so what we can do is, um, and we could actually do this for you, I believe when we uh, access your sheet, but you're just gonna create a tab. So file, um, just kidding. That's no, not lower left down the, here. The plus button. <laughs> Hit the plus button and then you can, whoops, I got a little crazy with a couple sheets there. Right click and you can rename it or we can, and we could just call it something what, like feedback. feedback. And then that way, what, what we can do is we'll pop in there from time to time. Some of you are, are moving a little bit quicker than others and, or have more questions during one phase than the other. And so what we're envisioning is you guys just, you know, type your question there and then I'll pop on. Hey, it's Bree. And, you know, here's my response. And then that way, too, if there are notes that we make or that you <laughs> make that we're trying to go back and find, it's all going to be right here. So we'll just keep responding to each other right down through that sheet. And you can get all fancy if you want. You know how I am. I get OCD about my Google Sheets. I got to have colors and matching fonts and do whatever you want on that tab. But the important thing is that way, instead of us sending you an email and like trying to figure out who's responded and when, everything will be right here on, on Google Sheet. And somebody asked, what about the Word docs? Can those be shared or just email them? Um, you could actually do the same thing. Uh, you can invite us to something inside of, yep. uh, what, do they, what do they call it on uh, Google? What's their, it's, doc. it's a doc, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so you have you have the docs, spreadsheets, and what? There's a couple of slideshow, I think, is another one. But all of them, you can just go up to that share button and just do d4d email at gmail.com, and then over in our email, we'll get the the um, you know confirmation that you've added us. 
then we can access it quickly, drop you guys notes. Like if you're working on Saturday even, and one of us happens to be on, we might pop on there and respond to you. So I think it'll be quicker, more efficient for all of us. Yeah. One of the things that we were trying to struggle with or that we were struggling with was that all of us were, you know, have feedback and we didn't know who had fed, who had given feedback to who. So I think this is a good way to, um, to do it. We were talking about other ways, but I think this is going to be the easiest. Yeah. Um, and then do you get notified when the sheet is updated? So there is a way to do that. I'm going to, sh I'll show you if I can find it here real quick. Um, I had it set up at one point where I had a sheet where I wanted to know when the VAs were working. Um, and I just have to remember where it is. I'm stoked. I just found like $200 worth of essential oils that I forgot about. <laughs> that, are, that are eight years old. Right. This one doesn't smell as good as doTERRA though. This one's terrible. You know what I use these in? I use these in our steam shower. We had a steam shower built and I put the drops in with the steam. Don't use peppermint though. Bad idea. I found that one out the hard way. I was like, oh God, it's too strong. Well, that's like I was laughing. What Duncan mentioned tiger balm, but I'm I'm getting caught up on orange is the new black. And for, it came, Tiger Bomb came up and, you know, one of the inmates was like, don't put it in your eyeballs and don't put it, and like, whatever. I was just thinking about that. Some strong stuff. Um, so what you do for notifications, where did I just find that? Under tools. So on your sheet, go to tools and notification rules and you can, um, you know, choose notify me when there are any changes or updates or whatever. And it will, it'll just give you an email and it'll say, you know, um, D4D email has uh, made changes on your sheet, so it's it's cool. It's just That's awesome, it's so easy. And guys, I, if we can put our, um, I don't know if people care who advice comes from or not, but I'll probably just always put AA next to my stuff. I'm, I'm yeah, and I tend to sign Bree, yeah. Okay. Or, or B, or we're A, B, C, and D, so we could do that. Oh, too. That's true. We could do that. Sign our letter. <laughs> You can see it anyway, like kind of like you can in Trello. There's a history thing if you wanted to go back. But I think you, as you guys get to know us more, you'll be able to tell just by reading it who wrote it. Mine will be the wittiest one. Yes. <laughs> Mine will be the longest. Doubtful. The winded. Mine will be short. I try to keep stuff really short. <laughs> All right. Awesome. I think we're good. Um, oh, okay. I don't see any more questions coming in. Cool. And uh, yeah, let's, I, I dig it. Here's what I love is that you guys are doing your work and that you guys are turning your stuff in and you're asking questions. Keep asking questions. As far as I'm concerned, the first three weeks are the hardest weeks. So, you know, anybody can put together a Shopify store and, you know, but it's more, we're kind of getting the ingredients together right now to do everything. So, this to me is the hardest part, but it's what most people don't do. Most people go out and just look for something that's selling and then they try to throw it up on a store. And I, you know, this is where, this is the, the key stuff right now. So just keep digging in, keep looking, just be curious about your niche. And, and you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It does not have to be perfect right now. It's just getting together the ingredients. You know, my tagline will change, I'm sure. And my, um, you know, some of the messaging will change as I learn stuff, but I'm not, you know, I, I'm, I'm at least starting with, I call it the North star, right? This is where my North star is right now. These are the people that I want to talk to. I know my niche is, I know that there's money in that niche because when the, when it gets hard and I'm starting to, you know, Oh, I don't know if I should do this or not. I'll know that there's money in this niche because I've already done the work and I know that it's there. So, um, yeah. Cool. Keep doing the work. Yeah, absolutely. You guys are doing great too. It's awesome. Yeah. We love chatting about all the different ideas that everybody has and watching the evolution of, you know, of those, those ideas. So, yeah. Uh, we had one last question here uh, from Jill. Um, married women who may or may not hunt. Hmm. Um, Bree doesn't hunt. 
They'll definitely love to wear casual, comfortable clothing and accessories, camo and other patterns and leggings, while exercising, meeting with friends, going to movies, and engaging in non-hunting outdoor activities. <laughs> I think that's great. That's yeah. that's a good. That's a really good avatar to get yeah, to get totally. going. Add some age to it. Um, you know, you're you're going to want to know that later on. But I mean, I think it's a great great start. My my guess on that age range is going to be like 25 to 45 female. Yep. So cool. Hey guys, I'm going to bail. Um, yep. I think we're all good. Awesome. Yeah, sounds good. And then um, as usual, um, like this weekend, as usual, I've only done it one time, but like on Sunday, uh, probably I'll go live for uh, anyone who wants to jump on with me or has additional questions or miss the live. Yeah, and hey, shoot me when you're going to do that. If I'm around, I'll, I'll join. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I kind of figured, a casual thing. If you guys want to jump on, awesome. If you don't, I mean, and if everyone's busy, whatever. We just keep rolling. All right, cool. All right. See you Thanks, guys. guys, and we'll be checking in with you again soon. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye.